What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna explain how to use the Camelot wheel system in a bunch of different ways so that you can mix your music harmonically without having to memorize all the keys in the circle of fifths. In the last video, we dug super, super deep in the circle of fifths and how all the keys relate to each other. So if you wanna understand the music theory behind the Camelot wheel, definitely check out that video. Also, in later videos in this course, I'm gonna show you how to use the mixed in key software to quickly analyze your tracks using the Camelot system, allowing you to instantly figure out the keys of your songs. This video is all about how to use the Camelot wheel itself. Okay, so when you first look at the Camelot wheel, you'll notice it looks almost exactly like the circle of fifths with 12 key steps around the circle and each of those keys being a fifth step from the last. The difference is that the key positions on the Camelot wheel are rotated five steps counterclockwise to the left. So instead of starting with C major at the top, like the traditional circle of fifths, we have E major at the top. You'll also notice that each key in the Camelot wheel is assigned an alpha numeric code ranging from one to 12. The reason the Camelot wheel rotates the circle of fifths is so that the keys that are assigned 12A and 12B are at the top, and that way it looks just like a clock with the numbers moving around the circle clockwise. So now just like the circle of fifths, the outer circle of the wheel are major keys and the inner circle are the relative minor keys. The major keys are always labeled with a number and the letter B and the minor keys are always labeled with a number and the letter A. So, at the 12 o'clock position, we have 12B for E major up here at the top. And then we have 12A for D flat minor right below it. So just remember that these A's and B's don't actually represent the actual key of A or the key of B. Instead, they're just there to differentiate major and minor. When you analyze your tracks in Mixed in Key or other DJ software such as Serato DJ, you can tell it to label your tracks with these Camelot system alphanumeric key codes. Then all you gotta do is remember the following simple techniques using those codes, rather than having to memorize the actual keys of your songs or even remember how the keys are arranged in the circle of fifths. The first and most reliable technique would be to mix songs that are in the exact same key with each other. Every time you mix between songs in the same key, your mix is gonna sound perfect. So for example, when you mix a track in 4A into another track in 4A, this mix will always be in key because both songs are in the key of F minor. The first way you can start to move around the wheel to create compatible tonal mixes is to step one step up or down by moving one number clockwise or counterclockwise around the wheel while staying within the same ring. So just think of the numbers on the Camelot wheel like the hours on a clock. Each number represents a step up or down from the previous number. If you go forward or backward one hour within the same ring, then you'll have a harmonically compatible mix. For example, if your first song is in 4A, F minor, which is in the inner minor ring of the wheel, then you can mix it into another song that's either 3A, B flat minor, or 5A, C minor. However, if your song is 4B, A flat major, which is in the outer major ring of the wheel, then you can mix it into another song that's either 3B, D flat major, or 5B, E flat major. So if you remember from the last video where I explained how the circle of fifths is laid out, the reason that these keys usually mix well harmonically is because the key in the middle, in this case 4B, A flat major, shares six of the same notes and only has one note difference in its seven note scale from the keys that are one step next to it, either left or right. So 3B, D flat major, and 5B, E flat major. But really all you gotta remember with the Camelot wheel is that you can mix one number up or down from the number your original song is in and just be sure to stick with the same letter which just means that you're staying in the same ring of the wheel this is a really cool technique to use if you want to give your dance floor a quick burst of excitement at any part of your set just by stepping up a number clockwise to move to the next key like moving from 4a to 5a this shift creates an energy boosting mix because you're mixing into a key that's one fifth higher than your current key Likewise, if you're stepping down by going counterclockwise to one number lower, like mixing from 4A to 3A, it can lower the energy on the dance floor slightly. However, that's not always the case because it depends on the songs that you're mixing. For instance, if you're mixing really energetic songs, it can actually create a really dope effect of taking your audience deeper into your mix and creates a cool contrast to help you stand out as a DJ a bit more. This technique of stepping keys up or down is more commonly referred to among musicians as modulating keys and is used in all genres of music. You'll usually notice it in a song when the key keeps changing either up or down. So for example, if the keys shift up and the melody seems to be climbing, this creates an uplifting effect that builds the energy. 
Another cool technique you can do is to create a major to minor tonal change or vice versa. You can do this by keeping the keys of your songs in the same number and only changing the letter. Your mix will be compatible harmonically because you're mixing songs whose keys are relative to each other, meaning they share all the same notes in their scales. The position of the notes are just shifted within their respective scales. As a result, they're heard in a different way because of the way their scales and chords are played. So for example, 4A can mix into 4B and 4B can mix into 4A. This works well because 4A, otherwise known as F minor, is the relative minor of 4B, otherwise known as A flat major. So now just to recap before we go any further, anytime you're mixing, you have four basic tried and true possible compatible keys to choose from that will usually work very well together. So you can either stay in the same number on the wheel, you can add or subtract a number, or you can stay in the same number and just switch from A to B or from B to A. Now I'm gonna show you a few other options that aren't as reliable as the first four techniques, but usually work fairly well. It really just depends on what notes your songs actually use in their respective key and when they use them. So if the outro of one song uses a set of notes or chords that is similar enough to the intro of the next song, they should work well together, even if their keys are more removed from each other around the wheel. This is where your understanding of the circle of fifths that we talked about in the last video is really gonna help you. Of course, you can always also just rely on your ears. If it sounds good to you, great. If not, then try another technique to see if that works with your songs better. Remember, this is just a tool to help you simplify things, but always go with what you think sounds best. Another way to create a gentle energy boost in your mix is to move around the wheel clockwise to what would represent one half step or semitone on the keyboard. We covered half steps in the last video in the circle of fifths, but just as a reminder, B to B flat, otherwise known as A sharp, is one semitone apart because a half step from B flat is B. Also going from B to C is one semitone since there are no black keys in between. So B is a half step from C. The mathematical equation to achieve this using the Camelot wheel is pretty simple. Just add seven to your base number and stay in the same ring of the wheel with the same letter in the key codes. So for example, you can try to go from 3A, B flat minor, to 10A, B minor. So three plus seven equals 10, and then you gotta stay in the inner part of the wheel with the minor keys represented by the letter A. So from 3A, you get 10A. Another example would be going from 1B, B major, to 8B, C major. So one plus seven equals eight, and keep it in the outer ring with the letter B key codes to keep it in the major key. So 1B becomes 8B. Keep in mind this is completely dependent on the particular songs you're using together and the portions of those songs that you're mixing together because you risk the melodies clashing if too many different notes in each of the keys are playing simultaneously. This creates what's called dissonant tones. Your best use of this one semitone shift is probably for a special effect rather than a long blend. Another way you can move around the wheel to create potentially compatible tonal mixes is to add two to your bass number, moving clockwise or counterclockwise around the wheel while staying in the same ring. This actually shifts the key two half steps or two semitones, otherwise known as one full tone. So for example, if your first song is 4A, F minor, which is in the inner ring of the wheel, then you can potentially mix it into another song that's either 2A, E flat minor, or 6A, G minor. The reason that these keys can potentially mix harmonically is because the key in the middle shares five of the same notes with two notes that are different in its seven note scale from the keys that are one step next to it, either left or right. Just remember, like the one semitone mix I just showed you before, your best use of it is probably for a specific effect rather than a long blend. You just gotta try out the songs together ahead of time and make sure they work with the portions of the songs that you're mixing. This technique is super effective if you wanna give your dance floor even more of a dramatic burst of excitement at any point in your set just by stepping up two key code numbers clockwise, like moving from 4A to 6A. Likewise, if you're stepping down two steps by going counterclockwise to two key codes lower, like moving from 4A to 2A, you can either use it to lower your energy, like if you're getting toward the end of the night and you wanna send a signal to your audience that your set is winding to a close, or remember, depending on the vibe of the song you're mixing in, it could also potentially create a more dramatic effect of taking the energy even deeper on the dance floor, creating a really cool contrast in your set. 
You can also try to switch between the tonal compatible keys by mixing the tracks based on a mathematical equation subtracting three from the bass number and changing the letter to the opposite letter. For example, you could try 6A, G minor, mixing into 3B, D flat major. 6A minus three equals three. And then you just switch the letter from A to B and get 3B. Another example would be 5B, C minor to 2A, F sharp major. 5B minus three equals two. And then you just switch the letter from B to A and you get 2A. But again, like the other bigger jumps around the wheel, this is most definitely not foolproof. So you definitely gotta try it out first ahead of time before you perform it during your set, just to make sure it actually sounds good. Another interesting trick is to mix diagonally one key code to the right or to the left. So for example, you can try going from 4B into 5A or 5A into 4B. Just like moving to the right or the left in the same ring of the wheel, it has the potential to sound good because the individual notes of the two keys are harmonically related. In other words, out of the seven note scale, they share six of the same notes with only one note difference between them. Now some DJs swear that this technique only works two ways, going clockwise from the outer ring to the inner ring, such as 4B into 5A, or going counterclockwise from the inner ring to the outer ring, such as 5A into 4B. But now that you've learned how all the keys actually relate to each other on the circle of fifths in the last video, you're probably wondering exactly what I was wondering because if you can go diagonally one way, you should be able to go the opposite way as well because it's exactly the same concept and the two keys are harmonically related in the same way, regardless of the diagonal direction. So again, just like moving to the right or to the left in the same ring of the wheel, out of the seven note scale, the diagonals in both directions share six of the same notes with only one note difference between them. So I encourage you to try going both ways diagonally to see if it works for you. Go ahead and try 4B into 5A or 4A into 5B. According to the logic behind the circle of fifths in traditional music theory, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever between switching the diagonal direction. And now while we're talking about the rules, you don't always have to follow these rules. The Camelot wheel is just a tool to help you. And some would even argue this software and this system makes it so easy for you to figure out what keys mix with what that you might lose creativity because you might tend to ignore songs that aren't in the same key range, resulting in missed opportunities in your mix. The bottom line is that this Camelot wheel technique is just a basic system, not a hard and fast rule. But once you understand the system, and your ear gets more sensitive to the chord structures and key signatures in regards to what melds and what doesn't, then you can get creative and experiment because you will have intuitively trained your ear to be able to identify whole sections of music that are compatible with each other from different songs, and you won't end up with any dissonant surprises. And if you do get key clashes, at least you'll know it and won't play those songs together ever again. So that's the basic idea of how to use the Camelot system. If you wanna learn more, check out the next video.